Hi everyone, no messing about today. Basically what you're watching right now is my secondary job for today. Uh, my primary focus has been to cover for David deciding to go on a wee two-week holiday on 67hailhail.com. So um, I've been trying to come up with ideas for the channel and struggling to be honest for today's video but I thought given that I've been writing about Celtic all day, various stories, I could bring those stories from written form into video and audio form for you right now so that if like me you've been slaving away like mad today you'll be aware of what's been happening in the world of Celtic because a lot has been happening. But read my lips and listen carefully right now, this is not going to be the usual polished video that you're used to. I'm doing it in the dark. I don't even know if this blue screen, green screen thing is even going to work. There'll be no graphics, very little in the way of photographs as well. Um, this is just basic, so let's just get through it. <laughs> By the way, remember to sub, to like, to tell your pals about the video. That would be much appreciated. Okay, it seems like today uh, it's been open season to have a pop at Celtic. I don't usually focus on paper stuff on the channel. Don't buy a paper. Um, don't ever really read the paper. But obviously, having been writing over in 67 Hail Hail, you kind of have to see what's going on a bit more. And one thing that has leapt out to me today is there is a hell of a lot of crap being said about Celtic right now that is just total crap and, you know, really, really bizarre stuff. Um, former EPL referee Keith Hackett, yeah, me neither, reckons Kyogo should be fined for, quote, exaggerating contact from opposition players. And this is the same Kyogo that hasn't been booked in 13 league games so far this season. And this guy's going on about fines. What a load of nonsense. One thing that I did write about earlier was... You know, a lot of people, I've seen them on Twitter asking Celtic to come out and defend Kyogo. And that's something I think that, that I and a lot of Celtic fans would like to see the club do. Whether they do or not, I, I would be very surprised actually. But I just think it would feed into what I'm just trying to create at the club at the moment. I know someone disagreed with me at the weekend when I said, I think on Axom that and just trying to create a bit of a siege mentality. Maybe that's not in his nature, but he has certainly been more animated after games in recent weeks and he's certainly been on a collision course with um, media in this country even more so than before and I think it's all deliberate. I think Ange wants everyone, Celtic fans, Celtic players, Celtic management all fighting this fight together over this busy, difficult, test and festive period and I think if Celtic came out and backed Kyogo in a way they'd be backing Ange as well. As I say, I doubt it will happen, but I think it would be really refreshing to see it happen. And it would send every Celtic fan into the next few games with a bit of fire in their belly. Talking of fire in their belly, next up in the totally ridiculous Tuesday opinions is former Hearts chairman Leslie Deans, who, and get ready for this, reckons last Thursday's match should be replayed, or even worse, the points should be awarded to Hearts. It's good to see you're, you're getting over it nearly a week later, Mr. Deans. I, I don't really know where to start with that. I think he's talking about the offside decision and some other things that went on and also the, the Barry Mackay incident in the second half when something hit Barry Mackay. I think it was a, a bottle. Obviously, that was unsavoury scenes and something we, we don't want to see, but replay the game. Give the three points to Hearts. I mean, what is going on here? Moving on to our Japanese section. Um, it's now basically a daily part of every video. Kyogo hasn't been called up for Japan's first game of 2022, which is a glamour friendly against Uzbekistan. That's because it's a Japan-only based team, so they're only taking players who play in Japan. Time will tell what happens with the competitive game that they have later in the month. I think they play China and Saudi Arabia in pretty big World Cup qualifiers. So no Kyogo, but Dason Maida and Rio Hatati are in the squad. But the reports are that if they move to Celtic before the Uzbekistan game, they will be replaced by Japan-based players. So it should mean that Kyogo will be around for the Aloha Scottish Cup tie at the very least, although he's still scheduled to miss the Hearts and Dundee United games. 
Um, Maeda, by the way, when we're talking about him, he was pictured with Andreas Iniesta at the J-League Awards. I'm going to put this photo up. Andreas, if you're trying to hint about moving to Celtic and do it subtly, you could make it less obvious. John Beaton will referee our cup final against Hibernian next Sunday. He's only refed one Celtic game all season, and that was the last 16 of the cup at home to Hearts in mid-August. Since then, he's given, I think, 19 or 20 penalties to Rangers, including a really controversial one at Ibrox against Aberdeen when Chris Sutton labelled him as, quote, totally incompetent, and also last week at Easter Road, so the Hibs fans don't love him either. On the subject of officiating, Callum Butcher has been cited for his awful challenge on David Turnbull at the weekend. His hearing is on Thursday. And finally, as I take a big deep breath, AC Milan's Rafael Leao is clearly a fan of Jota moving to Celtic because he tweeted this last night and he showed it with that excellently worded tweet. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea what it means either. Okay, Betis on Thursday night. It's not a real must-win game or anything, but there's still three points in the line. There's still prize money, there's still coefficient points. So it's still a game we want to see Celtic win. Why not hook up with our old pal all the way from match day one, Enrique Roldan, to find out why he's not coming over to Celtic Park anymore and what we can expect to see from Real Betis. And breathe. The thing is that uh, we don't like Boris, jo Boris Johnson at all yeah. after the last uh, restrictions. Um, I mean, we can go to Scotland, um, but we have to stay in our apartment or hotel or whatever for two days. So that first measure for people like me, for example, today I would be flying to, to Scotland. Right now I would be flying. So uh, that's uh, that made the trip impossible for me because I have to stay a couple of days in the hotel so I cannot go to the stadium. And besides, um, if I am positive, I have to stay for 10 days there. So at the end, I think that... Around 3,000 Beticos uh, were planning to go to, Scot to Scotland. I don't know how many people there will be. There is a um, Betica, I don't know how to say in English, Peña Betica. Uh, a like fan a club. The like Betis fan club, uh, which is in Edinburgh. And they will go for sure. And uh, But I don't know. I don't know the rest of the people from Sevilla. I don't know what they'll do. I don't feel like a guy who stays in the south of Spain would want to be spending 10 days in Glasgow. I mean, coming to Celtic Park is fine, but 10 <laughs> days in Glasgow, the, the weather, it's very cold, it's dark. Um, yeah, maybe not. Um, what have you made of the group stage so far for, for both Betis and Celtic? <laughs> Well, I have to say that I'm not a good uh, fortune teller. If people remember in my last, uh, the last time I was here, I said that for us, uh, Bayer Leverkusen wasn't uh, as difficult as it used to be. And um, we thought that Celtic was the most, the most difficult team of the group. But at the end, Bayer Leverkusen overran us. But I mean, the, I went to Leverkusen and uh, Betis did nothing, absolutely nothing. Mm. And they, are, they have qualified in the first place. Uh, and the pity for me is uh, is Celtic because I, I was looking forward to to qualifying both uh, of our teams. But uh, let me tell you something: before we qualified for the Europe League, I, I just wanted to play Conference League because I thought uh, it was like a new tournament. It was way easier. And the final is in Tirana, Albania, which has, yep. you know, this special thing. And after winning the conference, you can go to Croatia and spend a couple of weeks in the beach with, at the beach or something. So it is a pity, uh, I'm kidding, it is a pity that the Celtic didn't qualify. But uh, yeah, I didn't expect Bayer Leverkusen to, to play as well as they did. The president of Albania is a big Celtic fan. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but it, it's, it's that. very, it's very strange. Ilar Meta, his name is. It's very strange. Um, so we're all hoping that if we go to Albania, he'll sort us out. He'll get his tickets. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I mean, what about Thursday night? Um, both managers, both Postecoglou and Pellegrini, have been talking up the match, saying it is an important match. Do you believe that? Uh... Well, the thing is that Le Pellegrini, he never uses the, the same players for every game. I mean, he changed them uh, all the time. So I don't really know. Uh, we are we are already qualified in the second position, but uh, at the end, if we win the game, we, we get like uh, half million euros more. Mm -hmm. 
So our team is doing great uh, from a sportive, uh, sportive point of view, but economically we have we need money. <laughs> so at the end, I think that Bet there are some um, Spanish media which are saying that Betis is going to Glasgow just for holidays. But I don't really think so. I don't really think so. I think we will go for the game. And uh, because Pellegrini has one sentence. We play again. Uh, we play the same kind of game against every team. And we want to win every uh, game that we play. So I don't think we are going for holidays. But of course, it will be a tough game without our supporter there and with the special feeling, not an environment of uh, the paradise. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still going to be sold out. There'll be 60,000 there. So the atmosphere will be good. And... Um, there's coefficient points for us for Scotland. Obviously, Spain's not as big an issue because you, you're doing quite well. For we are in uh, December. Our season is is being great. We are in the third yeah. position, but now we have already qualified. But we have to go for it if we would, if we we don't want to lose the whole team for the next year, the next season. Yeah, I mean, you beat Barcelona on on Saturday away from home, which is which is an incredible result. Um, we always get tough European draws because last year we ended up with Lille, who won the French league, and we beat yeah. them at home. Um, so we always get terrible draws. What what are you thinking about Thursday night? Are you looking forward to watching it? Do you, do you think Betis are going to win? <sighs> well. The thing is that we are we are in a very good shape right now. I mean, we were winning everything, and then we had this horrible week uh, where we lost against Atletico de Madrid, Bayer Leverkusen, and the Derby. But then, uh, you know, we have this break because of the national teams, and after the break, we have won everything we have played, uh, everything, including Barcelona, including Foreign Baros. So I think that Betis is... Uh, it's in a good shape right now, and it, I think it's going to be hard for for Celtic. Of course, Celtic has also a great team, and uh, as you said, the environment, uh, of the atmosphere of the paradise. But uh, I, I think I'm sorry for your viewers, but I think that Betis can win. I think that Betis can win. Maybe a, a draw uh, can be possible. But you know, with this good shape of Betis and the fact that Celtic uh, is already qualified at the third position. I think that Betis can have more chances, but of course we have to play and you have a great team. There, there should be goals in the game and we've got Kyogo back, probably our best player, the striker. He didn't play in Seville. Um, Callum McGregor, our captain, didn't play in um, Seville. So hopefully, hopefully Celtic can get the result. But um, yeah, all, all the best for the season. All the best for the Europa exactly. League. And maybe the way things are going, we'll see you in the Champions League next season. Of course, please, please. That would be great, and you know that would be the the, the huge chance for us, the Beticos, to to be able to go there because we were looking forward to go to Paradise to visit the the team that gave us our colors almost 100 years ago. And if we're gonna do it this year, let's hope, let's pray to whatever is up there that we can make it next year. And if it's in Champions League, way better.